Hi again, I hope you're well. In today's video, I'm going to be giving you five tips, all of which I think will help you improve your photography in a variety of different ways. Well, it's not actually five tips, it's actually eight tips, but eight didn't sound quite as catchy, and I couldn't do that either, which I really wanted to do. So let's say it's five tips and three bonus tips. Either way, I'm really confident that these tips are going to really help you to improve your photographs. So let's crack on. Now, I wasn't planning on making this video today. My plan originally was to upload a critique video where I critique some of the wedding photographs which you very kindly sent in to me. So thank you to everyone who has submitted some images. But as I was looking through those images that I'd received, I noticed that some of them had, well, in my opinion, the same issues. So I thought it would make more sense to make this video first where I talk about some of the things which I can feel can really elevate a photograph from here to well, up here somewhere. So just before I get into the video, as always, I want to stress, as I do before I do any critique or before any of my workshops, that everything that I'm going to be talking about is my opinion, obviously. Now that doesn't mean that it's the right way or it's the only way, nor does it mean that you have to change your opinion if you disagree with anything. Photography, as with any art form, is obviously very subjective. So always go with your gut and what you believe to be right. But if you do like my images, and the way that I work, then hopefully this video is going to be really useful to you. Okay, so tip number one. Does your photograph have emotional impact? So any photograph is basically made up of three elements. We've got light, moment and composition. But for me, the most important one of those is moment. I feel that if a moment is really strong, then it can sometimes make up for the light and the composition not being great. So because of that, it's really important to try and make sure, especially when it comes to wedding photography, that there is a moment in your shot because that is where the emotional impact comes from. The reason that I like these photographs, for example, isn't because of light or composition, it's because they are each a photograph of a moment that to me gives the image emotional impact. Now many of the photographs which I've received in the past week were technically excellent, I was really impressed with great lighting and great composition but they just didn't speak to me and that is because there was no real emotion in them. They didn't really have the emotional impact that I love in photographs. Now this can be especially true sometimes for wedding day portraits of bride and grooms and that was a common thing that I saw and it's very easy to forget to inject the moment into a portrait but that really is the final piece of the jigsaw which can really elevate a photograph and it's important that we don't forget the importance of moment even in portraits. This is the reason that I will always prefer a photograph like this one compared to this one. So even if we have to try and create the moment ourselves by giving our couple prompts or guidance, it's still really important to do this to give the image emotional impact. And tip number two is does the photograph tell a story? Now this is another big one. It's very similar to the first point, but with this one, I'm talking more about context. For example, these photographs are all of wedding rings, but to me, they are just lifeless because they don't really have any real context. Basically, they're just, <laughs> they're just boring detail photographs. Whereas these are also photographs of wedding rings, but they speak to me so much more because they have context. They are telling a story and it just makes such a difference in my mind to the overall quality of the photograph. And again, I've received quite a few detail shots for the critique video, which were technically brilliant. But for me, unless those photographs tell a story and have context, no matter how well they are executed, they will always be just boring detail shots. So really try and think of context, especially again when it comes to wedding photography. And tip number three is to make the focal point of the photograph the brightest point of the photograph. Now, I'm not going to go into this one in too much detail because I've made a whole video about this, which I will link to up here. So if you haven't seen that video, I would definitely recommend that you go and watch that one after this one, because I feel that this is a tip which can make a huge difference to the visual impact of a photograph. And in a nutshell, what this is, is that the human eye will always look at the brightest part of a scene first. We do this without even realizing it. We're like magpies. So if we compose our shots, so 
So the most important part of the photograph, the, the part of the photograph where we want your eye to go, if we make sure that that is the brightest part, we can take advantage of that fact to give our images so much more visual impact. And as I mentioned, in the video that I've just linked to, I do go into this in much more detail with lots of examples. So if you haven't seen that video, I really would recommend you see that after this one, because this is a tip that I feel can make a huge difference to your photographs. And tip number four now is looking into the frame. Now this is a tip which I haven't really seen mentioned anywhere else, but I feel it's a really big one when it comes to portrait photography. And what I mean by looking into the frame is that I always want to compose my images so that the main subject of the shot is looking into the majority of the frame. Here are some examples where I've done this. So as you'll see, the main person within any of these images is looking into the majority of the frame. Now I'll say this is probably just a rule that, <laughs> that I've made up maybe, but it really messes with my mind. <laughs> maybe it's just an OCD thing, but if they were looking the other way, sort of looking out of the frame if you like, it really would just not work for me it would just it would just hurt me <laughs> on some level and I use exactly the same principle if I'm shooting walking shots too especially from a distance I will always compose a shot so that the couple are walking into the majority of the frame I say to me it just works visually whereas if you don't do that it really just, uh, it just <laughs> it's probably just me but it's something that I think makes a huge difference <laughs> And tip five is the rule of thirds. So I'm sure that many of you will be aware of this one already, but you, you can't really make a video about composition and how to improve your photographs without talking about the rule of thirds. I think it's just like photography law. The rule of thirds, if you're not aware, is basically where you divide up a photograph like this and you try and keep the interesting elements of the photograph near one or more of these four points. Now I think I subconsciously do this with the majority of photographs which I take, but you can definitely see it in these examples here. As I say, the rule of thirds is something that is, is very well known and there's probably countless videos on it out there already, so I'm not going to go into any more detail, but it's just something that if you weren't aware of already, just to try and bear in mind, because it does make images just look nice, they're just much more visually appealing. Now tip number six is to crop better. This is probably the easiest thing that you can do to help your photographs that already exist because you can always go back and look at the photographs that you've already taken and see if you can improve them by cropping better. The best way to crop is always with our camera at the time that we're taking the photograph in the first place. But if you can't do this, then you can still crop afterwards when you're editing the photograph. And by this, what I'm referring to is cropping out the parts of the image which don't add anything to the story. Don't have anything to the image because if it's not adding anything then why is it there in the final shot here are some examples where I'd like to think that the crop of the image has really improved the overall photograph now I find that I end up cropping the majority of my photographs, not always by a lot, but it's rare that you can't improve a photograph out of camera by even slightly cropping in a little bit, because a good crop, <laughs> I need to be careful how I say that, a good crop <laughs> can make a massive difference to the overall impact of a photograph. So if there's any distracting elements along the side of the photograph that don't add to that photograph, just crop them out. <laughs> And tip number seven is to clean up the clutter. <laughs> this is a big one for me. And again, it's one that I've made a whole video on, again, which I will link to up here. So I would also recommend that you go and watch that video after this one as well, because I really do feel that by using the tips that I show you in that video, it can make a huge difference to the overall look of your photographs. So as I show you in the other video, by spending two minutes in Photoshop, just removing the distracting elements to the frame as I have done in these images the difference it makes to the photograph can be massive and last but not least is tip eight which is to clean up your background so unlike the last tip which is definitely a tip to remember when you're actually shooting with your camera rather than when you're editing afterwards often the cleanest parts or the areas of the space with the least clutter are the ceilings or if we're outside the sky so when you're shooting if you you tip your camera slightly upwards in other words if you're just 
shooting slightly further up than you normally would, this will often mean that we're including more ceiling or sky in our shot. And because that is often the cleanest part of the space, it can really clean up the shots. It certainly cleans up the background and that can often make for a much more visually appealing final image. And doing this will also make your photographs look much more visually interesting. As a viewer of a photograph, we should never be able to tell the height of a photographer. So always try to shoot with your camera at different heights and different angles to clean up the background, but it will also make them look much more interesting as well. So I hope you found this video interesting and useful. If you did, I would really appreciate it as always if you could please like the video and also maybe consider joining my channel as not only will this really help me to produce more and better content for you, but as a member, you will also be able to get access to member only videos and take part in monthly member only live streams. So thank you very much again for watching and I will see you next time.